Zack, focus. There are no Shinra troops on this train. Understood? <laughs> Woohoo! Hey, how's it going, guys? Typical YouTuber intro, we gotta say, how's it going? Because, you know, I could totally hear your response right now. Anyway, in this video, we're gonna be getting a platinum trophy for Crisis Core. Let's go, let's go. There's a total of 50 trophies we need for that platinum, and almost every single one of them are missable. So this is gonna be awesome, because, you know, we love missable trophies around here, right? In case you've never heard of Crisis Core before, it's a game where we get to play as a dude with a giant sword, and that dude happens to be, well, I'll just let him introduce himself right now. Soldier second class Zack on the job. <laughs> Yeah, so he's pretty cool, you know, he's just like your typical anime dude with spiky hair and a big sword. And we work for a very humble, family-operated company called Shinra. Shinra, the electric company. And there is a rival group known as Wutai, who does not like Shinra at all, and they have guys undercover in the city, and we gotta take them out. So this puts us into our first combat. So I can cut loose, right? Within reason. It's... Showtime. Activating combat mode. Us being a soldier second class, these troops have absolutely no chance against us at all, and we slash our way through them all, which gives us this trophy for completing our first battle. Ooh, this music's intense. Oh, uh, you know a boss is coming up with this music. All the people running away too. Oh man. This is awesome. Come on! Ooh, I'm getting pumped! A behemoth? Oh, what a cute little doggy. Would you like a piece of my sword? Activating combat mode. This fight will introduce us to the digital mind wave, which is that little slot machine thing in the corner with all those people and numbers. Basically, the way it works is, let me make this real simple. If they all match up with the same person, we can use a limit that is associated to that person. And then if the numbers match up in a certain way, it will give us a temporary buff. The combat is so satisfying. I love this game so much, except when I get hit by super obvious attacks like that. <laughs> oh, limit break. Oh, let's do it, let's do it. O Octo slash. Let it rip. Prove your honor to me, trophy. Concentrate. I'm feeling it. Slice, 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 and bink! Oh, it didn't even kill him. Yeah. All right, Behemoth. Time for you to cool down a bit. Have some ice. Boom! Defeated. And that is the end of the prologue, giving us this trophy. Chapter one will put us on our first real mission, which is to assault this Wu Tai infested base. After slicing our way through all the troops at the gate, we'll make it inside the base. And once we're inside, we'll notice in the corner, there's a bunch of these little symbols here. Now, these symbols represent the first of many completely random missable, like, mini-games, I guess you can call them, that are in this game that have to do with trophies. This one in particular is very easy. All you have to do is run around this base, fight groups of enemies until they all get crossed off. This is going well. I almost missed the first missable trophy because I almost went without getting these last two. As you can see in the corner, the last two aren't filled in there. It's like they don't exist. What we have to do is we have to go and inspect one of these towers like this. And there's an enemy up there. And now we're going to see that we have access to two more. Boom. Boom. Don't even need the limit, bro. Fire is so OP. Magic in general in this game is just so OP. And over here is the final one. Should be? Yeah. We found him. He's <laughs> more like we found you, bro. We've been here for like hours. Oh, well, more like a few minutes, really. It's been like seven minutes. He brought in the doggies, too. Oh, this is actually a little bit of a strong group here. Well, hopefully we get this limit. Come on. Give it to me. Oh, what's it doing? Come on. Give me the limit. Woo! Bingo! Rush assault! Prove your honor to Yeah! That just wiped those boys out. Boom! Alright, now we can go continue the mission. I'm not sure when the trophy's supposed to pop. Eventually, we head back to the woods where we meet with the director who's just chilling in there for some reason. I don't know why he's here. But either way, we get our trophy, the Hero of the Wu-Tai War. 
And of course, with the finish of chapter one, we get this unmissable trophy for completing it. Chapter two will introduce us to missions. So we want to talk to this scientist dude here and he'll give us some stuff, whatever, materia, find it. And you'll see right there in the corner, it says we now have access to that mission. So missions are things that you can access from any save point in the entire game. And there's a whole bunch of them. And by a whole bunch, I mean a lot, like 300 of them. Actually, yeah, 300 missions. And they're all very short, but we have to do all of them for the plat. And that is why this is a super grindy game. Here is an example of your standard mission. It will throw you into a random part of a map. This case, it's this mountainous region. Other times, it will be like a prairie. Maybe it will be a cave, a mine, or like the slums of the city. There's a ton of different areas. I can't remember all of them on hand. But we go around, enemies can spawn, we kill them, whatever. There's chests like this one. There's only one in this case, because you see on the side of the screen, it says one out of one. And we just have to find the enemy to kill, which he is right over there, but I encountered a battle, so let's take care of this first. And take this! Yeah! Alright, you can see the enemy is right there. He is marked by the explanation point. And once we finish this fight, that will be the end of the mission. And we just have to do 300 of these missions. Oh boy. <laughs> Time to do the chain for that scientist. Let's go! Bring it on, whatever you things are. You get off, get your freaking claws off of me, you nerds. Spin to win, boys. Just spin to win, that's all you gotta do. Keep spinning, just keep spinning, just keep spinning. Boom, conflict resolved, mission complete. That didn't kill him? Oh, there we go. Just just one more slash does it. Ooh, 5% complete. Only 285 missions to go. Let's go. Last one for the scientist, dude. Here we go. Activating combat mode. I hate these enemies so much. Those guys with like all the claws. Because every time they hit you, well, not every time, but like a vast majority of the time they hit you, it casts stop on you, and it's so annoying to keep my distance, just keep spamming fire. The issue is I don't have like the most... Oh, I have no physical on, so I should be safe to go in. Or <laughs> not. I guess because no physical nulls the damage, but not the stop. Oh my gosh, please let me move. At least I'm not taking damage from it, so it could be worse! Oh my gosh! That's <laughs> so annoying. I hate that so much. Oh! Give me the limit! Give me the limit! Give me the limit! Oh, wait! Yes! Airstrike! Ooh, why are we outside? Why am I on my phone? Oh my goodness gracious, a helicopter. Damn! Oh shit! That was pretty cool, other than the fact that it should not even work, because we're inside a cave right now. And die. Oh yeah. Sup, bro, Chacho? We got all your Mako stones, my man. For the actual story, we're gonna head over to Benora Village, and we get to do this mission with Song. And, uh, Song, he's a douchebag. No other way to describe him, really. Nah, I'm just kidding. He's he's all right. He's all right. But we meet the actual big douchebag, Genesis. And he's the main villain of the game. You want to know how you know he's a bad guy? Just look what he does to poor old Song. <laughs> Don't worry, he's fine, because while escaping, this happens. More doggies. <gasps> oh! Yo, my man! He's aight! He's aight! There's no time. We have to leave now. Alright, Song, let's go. Once outside, we will encounter our second completely random minigame for a trophy. So we just have to press square at the right time to slash a rocket, and if we get all of them, we get a trophy. Boink! Oh, this is gonna be easy. Bink! 
slash Womp Boom Yeah, this isn't bad. So she says they all just come at the same the same speed. It's not like mixing up at all or anything. There we go. Two more, I think. I think there's only ten. Oh shit! Oh, are you kidding? Oh, I did not expect it to do that at the end. Oh, I gotta, I'll, I gotta reset it. Alrighty. I'm ready for it this time. Here it comes. Boom! Yes. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it to change camera angles the first time. That was, that really caught me off guard. I should get the trophy. There it is, slicing soldier. All right, so this part here, we're timed, and we have to go to a house in the village. But there's items spread out around the village we can only pick up now, and we have to pick up all five of them during this time section before the time runs out. So we got one, and then there's one, I think, up here. Yep. And now the other three are inside the village itself. So let's just run back down. I know the time. this isn't much time, but, like... It's way more than enough time, because we move so fast, this area is so small. We just have to go to that house that's, like, in, right in front of me. There's a... Oh, my God. Oh, oh, my... Let me pick it up. Oh, okay, this is getting a little spooky. I can... I can... I can... Hello, my name is Zach, and I like to say... I can... I can... I can... I can check out. <laughs> I, can check out. I can... And we should get the trophy. And that's the trophy, Benora Treasures. Chapter 2 done! We'll start Chapter 3 by heading over to this training room. Inside, we'll meet Professor Hojo, who is probably the coolest character in the game. I mean, does anyone even come close to how cool this dude is? Anyway, for this side quest, all we gotta do is go through a couple wave of enemies he'll have us fight, and when we're done, we'll get this trophy. You and I will share a special relationship. Yeah, okay, bro. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> Cool, uh, give me my trophy. First rate soldier, thank you, Hojo. Hopefully I never have to talk to you again. <laughs> we have to go see Director Lazard now for the main story. Congratulations. As of this moment, you are promoted to soldier first class. Woo! Let's go! Hell yeah, new promotion, boys. Ladies, I'm single. With our new promotion, we have access to Materia Fusion, which is gonna be huge for getting OP later. But for now, if we combine two materia to fuse them, it will give us this trophy. Almost immediately after our promotion, the Shinra headquarters is going to get under attacked. During this, we have a miscellaneous trophy that is easily missable. We're going to have to save a total of five people. The first three are inside the building itself here. We're going to save this scientist dude, and then we're going to save a soldier. Then we're going to go inside the training room and find this couple. I got you guys, don't worry, don't worry, I am a first class now. These tiny little robot spider things have no match to me. Yeah, uh, those things are so weak, those people should have been able to kill them. Like, you just, like, freaking stomp on them, they're like bugs. What are they doing here? Maintenance? Oh yeah, guy and a lady like this? Yeah, they're probably, they're probably doing it. Yeah, they're probably having a good time. I'm telling everyone! Oh no. My reputation. Get My fucked, standing. bro. Get fucked. You're a Turk too? I'm Cisne. Cisne! Hold on a second, guys. Let me just let me just uh you on I was gonna make a joke about her in song, but I guess I won't do it now. <laughs> right after that cutscene in an alleyway, we'll save this lady and her child, and that will give us this trophy, everyone's hero. This doesn't have much to do with trophies, but I would truly be doing this game a disservice if I did not show this scene. We end up meeting Zephyroth at one of the Mako reactors within the city, and while here, he tells us about how him, Genesis, and Angeal used to be real tight bros, and we get to see a flashback of them, and it, we get to see this awesome battle. Don't take Sephiroth like Yeah, that's right. <laughs> No. This dude's gonna make a fucking Angeal and Genesis kebab with that giant sword. Oh, this is awesome. Dude, this is so good. Ooh! Dude, words cannot describe how much I loved that fight. <laughs> it's not over yet, boys! 
Dude, Sephiroth's so badass! Oh, what are you gonna do, Genesis? Dude, you cannot defeat Sephiroth. No fucking way. Fucking soldier first class. Actually, they're both soldier first class. Oh, get your, get this Dante looking ass out of here. Yeah. Okay, that was pretty sick. I'll give Genesis, I'll give Genesis like half a point for that one. That was pretty sick. Oh. Yes. No, Angeal! Oh, fuck you! Don't put an end to it! After that cutscene in the reactor, we do encounter our old mentor, Angeal, who, like Genesis, has also gone rogue. And he does this to us. The biggest falcon punch to the stomach ever. Like, this dude, this dude's fucking entire abdominal is fucking destroyed now. Then he shoots this thing at us, which causes the ground to break underneath us, and we fall down, which ends chapter 3, giving us a trophy. We end up landing in a church, and when we do, we get awoken by this girl, and her name is... Well, I'll let her introduce herself. No, I'm Aerith. Nice to meet you, Aerith. Let me just check something real quick. Hold on. Scared me. 16. Okay, just wanted to make sure. I took a break from the main story at this point and decided to grind out a lot of missions at this save point. Prove your honor to me. I got it. This animation never gets old. Seeing him punching and kicking so quick. So ridiculous looking. Die. 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 And bink! This might be my 25%. Yes! Mission's completed 25%. Woo! Only 225 more to go? I took a massive break from the missions. I did way more after that 25% completed, and now I am probably completely overpowered for the rest of the game. Either way, right now we're going on a date with Aerith to the markets. While on this date, there are four missable trophies we can get here. The first one is super simple. We come talk to this bitch here at this stand and we can make perfume for Aerith. As long as we do the mini game perfectly, we'll make a perfect set of perfume and that will give us this trophy, Master Blender. The second one is really easy. There's this kid here in the corner close to the perfume shop and all we have to do is play this simple number guessing mini game. And if we guess the number correctly, we will get this trophy, bingo. This next trophy wasn't so easy. So this asshole runs a materia shop here in the slums. And we are tasked of running around the slums to pick up 20 materia that ended up on the ground somehow from his shop. There's some stupid story behind it, it's irrelevant. Either way, we have to pick up all 20 materia in 14 seconds. And this is way harder than it looks. Not only does one super small mistake mean you're already out of the run, because this run has to be absolutely perfect. You don't have to simply just run over the material on the ground. No, you have to press X to pick it up. So while you're running around holding the sprint button, mind you, and using the control stick to turn and everything, you have to keep spamming X at the same time to make sure you do not miss any of the material when you run over them. Oh, and don't even bother controlling the camera. The camera's ass in this, so you might as well just try to memorize where the materia is and just run in those motions. Here we go. Already screwed up. There's no way I'm doing it. Yeah, oh my, it's so frustrating. It's so hard to like just stay on course when you're trying to sprint and be so precise. I feel like an idiot. I, I legitimately feel like an idiot trying this. Yeah, this is a failed run, guaranteed. I mean, the time's already up. At least I, bro I beat 20 seconds, so that's not that bad, I guess. We're getting there. This is the run, boys. I'm feeling good about this one. Yeah. On spamming X, spamming X. Stay focused, stay focused. Oh, this is... No! I... <laughs> this sucks! This sucks! That was better than last time, though. I kept having failed attempt after failed attempt. So many of them, and I was starting to lose hope. Until I had this one. Feeling good about this? Shit. No, 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 no. Oh, so close. Oh, that was like less than a... Mm. I'm so mad that last attempt. It was so close. Let's see. We got this one. Fuck! 
No, because no! Oh my god, dude! Fuck, dude! Ugh, let me just throw all my product on the ground and have this guy pick it up. Fuck this guy, dude! Who, who came up with this mini game? This vendor is an idiot. <sighs> dude, it was looking so good. No! No, no, no! Shut up, Aerith! I don't want to talk to you! <laughs> you can do it! You can do it! Mm. <laughs> Damn! I'm getting better, though. I am getting the pattern down. Ah, chef's kiss! Let's go! I never have to see this mini game again, other than the fact when I edit this video, I'm gonna have to see it again. But it's still good. We did it. It's okay. And the trophy that should not have been a bronze trophy. And the fourth trophy in this area is as long as you got a lot of riz like me, you'll get this trophy. A good match for Aerith as you're leaving the slums. Back in Midgar, we'll be in Hojo's lab, and we have to do three mini games in here. They're all real simple and not even worth really going over, but each one of them will give you one of these missable trophies. Chapter 4 complete! Squats. Ah, uh, yeah. The best mini game. So all we gotta do is press triangle every time we feel our controller vibrate. And as we go on, it will be faster and faster. And if we can just keep up with the rhythm, we'll just keep squatting and squatting. Now, I don't think I've ever mentioned this, but I'm an absolute beast when it comes to squats. Especially Final Fantasy VII squats. Don't believe me? Just look at me destroy the current champion of squats in the Shinra building right here. This guy just needs to wait until I speed up some more. And I'll absolutely obliterate him. Oh, yeah. No! No, 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 I fucked up. It's okay. What? You can afford a fuck up. You can afford one fuck up. I won't lose. I'm like ultra focused right now. Oh! Oh! Oh my god. My dude's Zach's legs are gonna be fucking destroyed tomorrow. <laughs> Trophy! Okay, for this side quest here, we're gonna have to go to the park of the slums. So right over in this area. Now apparently there's a Wu Tai spy undercover here as one of the kids. I think it's the one with the hat it's supposed to be, so. I am a I eat soldier and shit. Oh yeah, he's definitely not a spy. <laughs> After saying that. So you have to talk to him a couple times. I think one more time. Yeah. What? It's magic! He's not a kid anymore! <laughs> he's now a Wu Tai guy. Excellent work. Yeah. Now give me my trophy. Thank you. At this moment in the story, we're sent on a mission with Song and a couple infantry men. And while we're hiking up this snowy mountain, we become pretty well acquainted with one of the infantry troops. Yo! Don't fall too far behind. At least someone's keeping up. Well, I'm a country boy too. From where? Nibelheim. <laughs> How about you? Me? Gungaga. <laughs> hey, what's so funny about that? You know Gungaga? No, but it's such a backwater name. Ditto Nibelheim. Like you've been there. I haven't, but there's a reactor there, right? A Mako reactor outside Midgar usually means nothing, nothing else out there. there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good news, Song. Me and... Cloud. Whoa! I know this guy! Isn't he from, uh, Super Smash Bros? Our destination is this weird factory facility place that Genesis is held up in with all his troops. I guess he's just, like, in there beating his meat or something. Who knows? And we have to put a stop to it. The game will prompt us to sneak in from all these guards walking around. We can do a lot of things, like hide behind these boxes. There are quite a few chests around that you could get. And once we make it in, as long as we weren't seen, we will get this trophy. 
Inside, we end up confronting Genesis, and this is the moment when I kind of realize just how overpowered I really am for this part of the game. Check this out. Here we go. Awesome. Crap. Oh my! <gasps> then we get to fight Angeal. Well, not really Angeal. Well, yeah, Angeal, but like this giant monster that Angeal turns into. And this boss fight also was pretty uh interesting. Oh, uh, this is gonna be so good. How many how many hits is it gonna take? Let's see. Oh, actually, not as much as I thought. I thought it would do more damage than that, but holy cannoli! Is he even gonna get an attack out? Oh, boink! He didn't even get to hit me! <laughs> the chapter ends with Angeal dying, but before he dies with the last bit of his strength, he hands down the legendary Buster Sword to us. So now we can use this sword instead of our dinky little one. Oh, and we get a trophy. Chapter 6 is fairly lackluster in terms of trophies. There's only really two things we're going to have to do during this chapter. First is uh, pretty far into the chapter, actually. We're going to have another one of those completely random minigames. This time, we have to stop all the enemies from reaching the gate. This is very simple. You literally just have to run into them as they're running towards it. They run so slow, and as long as we get all of them before they reach the gate, we will get this trophy. The second thing is, right after that, instead of going where we have to go, we want to turn around and go down this ladder over here. Here we'll encounter a small cutscene with Cisne, and we won't get a trophy yet, but this is an important setup for trophy next chapter. And of course, as usual, when we finish this chapter, it will give us a trophy. Chapter 6 is the final chance to tie up any loose ends within the city, because after this, it's the point of no return. First, I'm going to talk to this Genesis fan who runs a Genesis fan club, and basically, their fan club is running really low on funds, so we convince her to merge with another fan club. So all we have to do is run over to Loveless Avenue and talk to the Genesis fan there and merge them together. Next, in the same area as the first Genesis fan, there's a young child here whose mother has gone missing. Basically, after we talk to him, we just have to find his mom, who is up by the train station. We find out that she's kind of, like, all upset because Angeal has gone missing or whatever, and she runs the Angeal fan club, and we convince her that she has duties as a mother. So she goes back to her child, we go back to where the child was, she's magically with him, and then we get a trophy, fan club savior. Next, I went into the lobby of the Shinra building here, and as long as you talk to Cisne in the previous chapter, have that little cutscene where you have to go back, this lady here, the receptionist, will let you know that you now have your own fan club, which will give us this trophy, Fan Club Aficionato. I should get a trophy now when I talk to Aerith here, because I'm going to make the final flower wagon. Whoa, that looks badass. It doesn't look like a wagon. What you talking about? That looks cool. Trophy. So I figured I'm not overpowered enough for the main story. So I think it's time to do the rest of the side missions I could before moving on past the point of no return. Of course, after a very long time, I finally got 50% of missions complete, which means I only have 150 more to go. Now, if you thought I was completely OP before, huh, you've seen nothing so far. Basically, I got all the puzzle pieces, and the main puzzle piece being Costly Punch, which is an ability that does a lot of damage as long as your maximum health is a ridiculous amount. And I got break HP limit, so my health is ridiculous, and I'm not even close to as strong as I could possibly get. Just check this out. Alrighty, let's test out this build. I should do a lot of damage. Activate Here we go. These are really strong enemies, too. And punch! Oh! <laughs> Overpowered! And that wasn't four nines. That's five nines right there. Oh, baby. You can see, though, even doing the damage cap, these enemies still take quite some time to kill. Because, like, in these later missions, these enemies can have close to, like, a million health. Either way, I punched my way all the way to victory. And I got this trophy, then, for finally getting 75% of missions complete. This is Minerva, by far the strongest boss in the entire game. 
And of course, she is completely optional, but for trophies, we have to defeat her. And you will eventually unlock her while doing the missions like I have here. And she, oh man. Okay, well first, you need ridiculously high stats to even stand a chance against her. Right here on screen, you can see my current build. I don't have maxed out everything, not even maxed out anything actually, but I'm very close on maxed out health. Just for reference, maxed out stats are 255 for everything. So I'm a little, I'm, I'm pretty far up there in the stats, but not maxed out. And the good strat is to use steel on her and just keep trying to do that until you can get the phoenix downs off her. She will give you 99 phoenix downs if you successfully steal off her. And if you just keep phoenix down up the entire fight, that will give you that cushion you need just to survive. This was only my first attempt and things were going incredibly well until there's something that I completely forgot. Bro, we might actually do this. This isn't that bad, actually. We should be okay. Or not. Oh! This thing, I, it gets rid of your Phoenix Downs. I completely forgot. Yeah, if you die to that, even if you have a Phoenix Down, it kills you. Like, for good. Jeez. Here we go. Alright, just make sure we're at full health when she activates it. Yeah, heal up and guard. We should live this. I don't even think it would be close to death, to be honest. Yeah, that, that wasn't too bad. All right, heal up, heal up, heal up, and get a Phoenix down, get a Phoenix. Oh, I'm so stupid. Why did I heal up first? I should always prioritize the Phoenix down before healing up. You know what they say, third time's a charm. Now, we just gotta make sure we get those Phoenix downs. That's the first step as usual. Very good start, very good start. I should always try to keep wall up at all times, but let's just get focused on getting those Phoenix downs first. Give them to me! Oh, let's go! Okay, we got our Phoenix downs. Now we can really start focusing on the damage. This ain't too bad once you start going. Like, I kind of got most of the attacks down. As I said that, yeah. It's okay, we have Phoenix Downs. You know what happens when we die and we come back with a Phoenix Down? We just use another. <laughs> and now we're good. We're almost at the halfway point. There we go. I'm getting good at dodging that move. When she does that one, you kind of just roll in twice. I like how these shields don't even do anything for her because I just do max all nines anyway. Oh, almost had me, bitch. Almost. That's so satisfying when you block that move, or dodge it, rather. Okay, I'm ready for this limit. Heal up. Heal up. Move away a bit so she can't attack us immediately after, and just hold block. I don't know if blocking this actually does anything, but I feel like it does. It doesn't hurt. And then, Phoenix down, hurry. And we're good. We're back stabilized. We survived her limit. Easy peasy. I am so determined this time. Like, there's no way I'm dying. If I die, I'm gonna freak out. We got the Tom Berry summon? <coughs> oh, I'm dying! <coughs> oh, IRL, not in the game. Okay, if we can end this with the Tom Berry summon, that would be the funniest thing in the entire world. Oh. oh, I'm close to her too. Okay, uh, should we use the Phoenix Sound or run back? Run back, run back, run back, run back, run back, run back. Run back then, Phoenix Sound. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, we would have died right there if we went for the Phoenix Sound because she would have killed us while we were using it. That's like her fastest move, the, the melee one. I don't know when we should, we should use this Tom Berry. I'm going to get the last hit with the Tom Berry. Should we use it? Use it now because she's using Ultima. Ultima is going to kill us, and it's going to be annoying to try to revive, so we'll take the risk. I don't think this is going to kill her, but I hope it does. It would be so funny if this is the final hit. Come on. Tink! No! Oh, how many hits away? How many hits away? Let's count them. Let's count them. How many hits away were we? Okay, one. And try to... I think it's one more hit. Get over here, Minerva. I am sick of you. 
this date has gone on long enough. We can probably get it now. Oh my gosh, we were two hits. If we just got two hits and then used that Tom Barry, we would have got the final hit with it. Divine rule broken! Yes! That's the hardest one too, so we are pretty much guaranteed the platinum at this point. Now that Minerva is defeated, we can go past the point of no return and get our trophy for completing the chapter and go on what's gonna be Zack's final mission. Sephiroth, Cloud, Zack, and one random infantry trooper nobody gives a shit about are sent over to Nibelheim to investigate the reactor that's nearby because there's been a lot of people disappearing around it and monsters showing up, so we gotta see what's up. Oh, and this place happens to be Cloud's hometown, so pretty exciting for him, huh? Hopefully nothing bad happens to it or and everything goes smoothly, right? <laughs> so there's really only one miscellaneous trophy here that we have to get, but it's a really, really long quest line. It's the Seven Wonders of Nibelheim. The first wonder is, the water coming from the water tower in the center of town is red, and we have to find out why. When we go up there, we find out the reason is, because, well, someone decided to turn it all into Kool-Aid. No, it's just this red materia that's in there. The second wonder is in the inn, and there's a painting apparently upstairs here that has a girl in it, and sometimes the girl disappears from the painting. I think the painting is right here. Oh, she's not there. I never even saw her in the painting. It's true. Okay, it's just a chair. Okay, I came back upstairs after going downstairs, and it looks like she's there. This girl. That does not look creepy at all. Okay. <laughs> now we have to catch the innkeeper coming upstairs. He should be... Oh, there he is! Okay, so now we just have to follow him upstairs to the painting. Is he gonna be here? Yeah, there he goes, he's running. <laughs> Definitely very sneaky about it whenever he's hiding. Oh! Oh, shit. Hey, what's up, bro? Yeah, what's in there? Your secret porn stash? Secret. What is it? This is very embarrassing, but I keep a nest egg that my wife A nest about. egg? What? He keeps eggs in there? What? Why does he have to hide eggs from his wife? What's a nest egg anyway? You know what? Whatever. That solves the. This painting is actually two sided. The painting's two sided. One side has the girl sitting in it. When you get to my age, it gets harder to remember. Things. Why would this? Why would you even need this security Sometimes measure? I Just open it and check. Anyway, whatever. Wonder solved. Wonder number three. We're gonna have to go up onto the mountain here, and we're gonna fight these three bomb enemies in this area. And as long as we kill them all fast enough before they can explode, which is super easy for me because I'm absolutely overpowered, one of them will drop a gold shard, and that is wonder number three. I don't know how it's a wonder, but hey ho. Now this is for wonder number four. Inside the old mansion by the town, there's a laughing safe. I already got the combo. It was quite a quite a journey to get it, but we got it. And once we put this combo in, we can find out why the safe is laughing. There we go. Success! Okay, what's why is this safe laughing? It's a <laughs> What was it doing in there? Didn't, how, how was it breathing? How was it, what, what was it? I mean, it's a cactus. They can go a while without drinking, but what was it eating? Either way, that's the wonder solved. After we progress the story a little bit, we can access the old caverns below the Shinra mansion place in Nibelheim here. And basically, the wonder is there's weird groans coming from down here, and we have to get a key by killing one of these enemies in the basement area. And once we get a key, we can go open one of these coffins, and we'll find someone sleeping in one of them. And I guess that solves the wonder. There's just some dude sleeping in a coffin down here. <laughs> and yes, I know who it's supposed to be. Before continuing the wonders, we're gonna take a little break to do a little bit of the story. Now shit really starts to hit the fan because Zephyroth, while in town, was talking to one of the little kids and one of them told him Santa Claus isn't real, which is just an absolutely ridiculous thing to say because everyone knows Santa Claus is real. <laughs> And Zephyroth could not believe this information, so he went and locked himself away underneath the Shinra mansion here and spent days and nights non-stop studying information to find out if Santa Claus is real. And after so much time, he finally came to the conclusion that Santa isn't real, which caused him to realize he does not have to be a good boy anymore, and he decided to be naughty, and he decided to... 
Burn down the village. In the burning village, we're gonna find our friend here who we're coming up with the wonders with and solving them. And we're gonna have to save his mom from his burning house. It's not too hard to do. Once we save her, we'll find out that this was apparently the sixth wonder somehow. Whatever, I'll take it. And that is the sixth wonder out of the way. How could Sephiroth do this? He was such a nice guy. I did not suspect him to be so- <gasps> Him. How could you do this? How could you do this to Tifa? The town, Tifa, Cloud, and Tifa, the town's people, Tifa, and, and Tifa. Now that Zephyroth has gone completely rogue, I decided it's time we give him a piece of our mind. Sephiroth is the most powerful soldier first class, probably one of the strongest swordsmen in the entire world. So we are in for one of the most crazy and hardest fights ever. Let's do this. Okay, guys, it's gonna be good. Let's see. Boom! <laughs> Just fucking one-shotted him. Oh my goodness. Guys, guys, the legendary soldier first class, Zephyroth. He, was, he wasn't trying the first time. He's gonna try now, okay? He was just testing our skills. This, this is the real fight. This is the real one. Here we go. Activating Bring it on. Bink! <laughs> No, nah, no, nah, he, he he just sucks. He, he he just sucks. Even though we completely decimated the dude, it's still one of those situations where we won, but we really lost. You know what I'm talking about. Either way, Cloud shows up and tries to save the day, and th this is what happens. It's kind of ridiculous. Why doesn't he just shoot him with his gun instead of using the Buster Sword? He does have a gun, right? <laughs> Here we go! Thus, the most iconic- the most iconic internet video game rivalry was created. And he got wrecked. <laughs> as much as I do love this story, this part has always been the dumbest shit to me ever. Like, I- I can't believe that this is real, like, within the game, right? It's like a joke. Yeah, like, look, Cloud is so fucked. No way he's gonna turn this around, right? Like, what the fuck? How? How is that possible? Impossible. <laughs> he's, I mean, he's not wrong. It is impossible. Like, what the fuck? Why does Zephyroth just let go? <laughs> and Zephyroth's dead. GG. Totally dead. Definitely, um, you know, definitely not gonna come back somehow. And with all that shit, we're finally at the end of the chapter. Trophy! Bink! So yeah, after the incident, Shinra took us in to experiment on us and basically took all the survivors because they wanted to cover up this incident since Zephyroth started it and they basically told the public that we're all dead. So Zack is lucky enough that he has already been exposed to Mako since he's a soldier and he's, this didn't really affect him so much physically. As for Cloud though, yeah, he's his body's not used to the Mako and this he has Mako poisoning, so yeah, he's pretty fucked up. So our mission at the moment is just basically get somewhere safe with Cloud and yeah, just try to find our way out of this mess. As I was leaving the Shinra mansion, I got this trophy, Mail Completionist, for getting mail from all senders. Yeah, this game's got like a mail system I never really mentioned because it's kind of boring to be honest to talk about, but yeah. Speaking of mail, we got some mail from our good old friend, the Wonder Hunter. Hey! Bisto, it's been a long time. How are you? Me and my mom ran away from the village when the fire spread. But when we came back after a really long time, everything in the village was back to normal. How could that be after such a nasty fire? Also, there was no one there that I recognized. Weak people and freak buildings. It's all Syndra's fault, isn't it? I hate them! But you were always nice to me, so I left you a thank you gift. There's a treasure hidden somewhere in the village. I hope you find it. I guess we never got around to finish it all seven wonders, but we could call the village itself the last wonder. Can't we? 
Okay, so obviously Shinra put people in disguise to pretend nothing happened. Anyway, if we pick up the little treasure he left for us here, we get the trophy. Seven Wonders Expert, finally. We escaped Nivelheim with Cloud, and now we're on our journey, just walking the streets on the land. And we'll come to this path that has a sniper rifle. And now it's time for another completely random minigame. We're gonna have to run down this path and stop at every sniper rifle and shoot down all of the Shinra sentry bot thingies and not let a single one of them escape. This could be pretty tricky, but as long as you got a pretty decent aim, which I don't, by the way, this shouldn't really be too much of an issue. And uh, once you make it to the end of the path and you got none escaped, you will get this trophy. Oh yeah, we also run into Cisne, and because she's so cool, even though she's working for Shinra, who's technically after us, she gives us a free pass, because Cisne is cool. Oh yeah, and we also run into Genesis, who's still around apparently, and up to no good. But we get out of that situation, and we go to... Cloud, this is my hometown. This is Gungaga. <laughs> that never gets old, oh my god. Now this area probably has the weirdest, the absolute weirdest and most random miscellaneous missable minigame trophy in the entire game. It's also the last one, so that's good. What we have to do is we have to run around this area until we encounter seven battles, just seven random encounters. They could be anything. And then when we try to leave the area, only after we fight seven random encounters, the game will prompt us to do this mini game where chests and enemies are coming down the waterfall. And as long as we get all the chests that are coming down, it will give us this trophy. It's just so random. <laughs> Chapter 9 complete! This is it, the final area of the entire game. Now here, I'm just gonna do a ton of cleanup and get a lot of trophies. The first thing I'm gonna do is go and complete the remaining of the missions. While doing this, I got this trophy, Shop Completionist, and then of course, missions 100% complete. Finally. Oh, I'm so close to the platinum now. The hype is real! Alright, so our next goal right now is we have to get all DMW images. At the moment, we are only missing one, and it's this one right here in the corner. So let's go get him. So to find him, we're gonna have to go down to this mission here, the Mysteries of the World, and it's 10 2 3. That's the one we have to go to. Once inside the mission, we're just gonna run around like a maniac until we encounter the magic bot. It could take a while, because he's a bit of a rare encounter. Oh, hey! Okay, that wasn't too bad, actually. It took a little bit, but really wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So now we just have to use each ability he tells us to use. Very simple. Boom, Fyra, and what's next? Gravity. Got him. All we gotta do is make him very happy. One more should do it. Assault Twister. And then he's so happy. He's like me when I get a Platinum Trophy. <laughs> and that's it. So now all we have to do is... Boom, that's it. Actually, yeah, we just get it right here. I thought we'd have to complete the mission. Limit Break Collector. Okay, I guess I lied when I said that waterfall thing was the last like random missable trophy. This one is also pretty random, but not as random. So in the final dungeon here, we have to run around and inspect all of these slabs that have different acts of Loveless on it. Once we inspect all of them, we'll go into this room with all this water and we have to fight some enemies. Once we kill them all, it will unlock this path and it will give us this trophy. I didn't realize this, but this last trophy I need is by far the worst trophy I had to get. So I have to get all of these to 100%, and to get them to go up, you need them to land on the DMW. And this took me, I'm not even kidding, this took forever. So to do this, we go in this mission here, and we just AFK while these guys attack us. And there is no way it's not done, I just woke up. <laughs> I had it going all night while I was sleeping. I had it going all evening yesterday. There is absolutely no way we did not get it yet. I will be incredibly surprised. Here we go, all right. Look at my playtime, oh my gosh. That's how long it's taking. Here we go, moment of truth. Woo, let's go, yeah.
For this final trophy before I go to the final boss and get the platinum, I need to get a million gil to buy an item that's a million gil. And that's going to be pretty easy to do because all I have to do is just sell a ton of items. I have so many items I'm never going to use because I am just so overpowered and don't need them. I could probably get up to like freaking millions and millions of gil. So a million is nothing. I'm just looking for something else to sell here. Oh, th these, yeah. Okay, this is free. <laughs> just sell all these. Boom. It's gonna put me way over. And now, I just need to buy the Genji helmet, wherever that is. It is right here. Boom. And this should give me... Boom! Genji equipment. Let's go. We are ready to go to the final boss. Here is my setup. You can see my stats right here. Literally maxed out everything except luck, so... I think I'm pretty good. Let's go. Time for a showdown. This is it, boys. The final battle. And of course, in true JRPG fashion, the villain has to turn into some giant big monster thing for the final boss. This fight is pretty easy, there's not much to say about it. The only thing I'll say is, he is incredibly tanky, even with us doing, uh, five nines. He still takes not even one, not two, not three, but like, so many hits from us. But, since we're all maxed out stats, we really have no threat of dying, and it's pretty easy. We just take him down, and we go on to the next phase. This is it. Everything worked up to this time. Genesis, it's time you go down. And he's going down quick, oh my gosh. Yeah, he's not nearly as tanky as his last form. Still pretty tanky, though, because we are doing a ton of damage per hit, and he is taking them, to be fair. Oh, dude, you have no chance. Even with, like, my regen, I'm just gaining health anyway. Oh, let's try to end this with an Octo Slash. If we could end the game with an Octo Slash, that'd be crazy. Come on, give it to me. No! Okay, give me a limit. I need any limit. Oh! Yes, come on. Give it to me. No! Oh! Come on, please! Oh, it's not gonna give it to me, is it? I wanna end it in a stylish way. Octo Slash? No. It's not gonna give me a limit, is it? Please just give me one. Please! Yes! Yes! Come on! Come on! No! <laughs> it's not gonna give me a limit. Please give me a limit! Please! Yeah, I've been waiting too long. Let's just do this. Bink! Owned, bro. Genesis is defeated, and then we take his barely alive body outside with a bunch of other barely alive people's bodies, and like a fucking psychopath, Zack sits down and eats apples with them. Then this weird creature shows up and gives us a letter from Aerith, which reveals some interesting information. How are you? I wish I knew where you were. It's already been four years now. Wait, four years went by while we were trapped in the Schrinder lab? Wait, doesn't that mean that Aerith is in her 20s now? Oh, you boys know what that means! It's time for a tragic ending. So Cloud and Zack finally make it back to Midgar here on the outskirts. Unfortunately, we are greeted by a massive army of endless Shinra infantry waiting for us. Boy, oh boy. The price of freedom is steep. <clears throat> Embrace your dreams. And, whatever happens, protect your honor. As soldier! Come and get it! Activating combat Bring it on, nerds! Hopefully that's the last time we have to hear activating combat mode! Yeah! I will take down every single one of you! <laughs> it's actually kind of ridiculous. They are doing zero damage to me right now. The only thing that's doing damage to me is those random mortar shots that are coming in from the background. But other than that, I can go on forever here. Oh, shit, okay, maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. Well, we have, like, a ridiculous amount of curatives, so we're good. 
Oh, what's up, Sisne? Song? Sephiroth? Sephiroth's who we miss most, because he, he did not screw us over at all. I gotta go. Later, bitch. They're disappearing from the digital mind wave. Oh no. Ah, uh, we don't need him anyway. Mass murder continue. You know, this is supposed to make us feel bad for Zack and see like, oh, Shinra is so bad, but like, look at this. We are literally committing mass murder right now. We are killing, we are wasting so many human lives here. It's kind of ridiculous. Oh shit. Angeal, Cloud. You know, I miss Angeal. He died so long ago. <laughs> you have my Hello. thanks. Hey, Aerith. You guys are going to lead the digital mind wave too? Ah, uh, you're losers anyway. Nah, Aerith is staying cuz she's a she's a simp. She's a simp for Zack. Oh shit. All right, more mass murder. Let's go. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, the game's like, oh, you're going too much. We gotta, we gotta end it. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is the end of Zack's story here. We cannot take on any more Shinra troops, and they eventually overwhelm us, killing Zack. For some dumb reason, they stupidly left Zack barely alive, and with the last bit of his strength, he was able to give the Buster Sword down to Cloud, and had Cloud promise to be his living legacy. I'm your living legacy. And with that, that's the end of Crisis Core. Couldn't show all of it because copyrighted music playing, and I gotta make my money. And here we are getting our final trophies. And where's that platinum? Where is it? Where is it? Yes, my living legacy. Thanks for watching, everybody.